Thank you very much for coming to my talk. I'm surprised to see so many people. I'm aware you have other options, bed being one of them. Um, I'm Kate. I'm here to talk about the art and science of the motivational corporate anthem. I warn you now, there is very little art involved. There's a really small amount of science that I throw in at the beginning to justify the rest of the talk, which is largely laughing at corporate anthems. So I hope that's what you've come for. Um, so yes, this is my serious bit to start with. There is a scientific basis for using music in the workplace. We know that we have plenty of evidence that music can improve productivity, it can help you work faster, more efficiently, it can improve morale and mood and happy workers work better. Um, different types of music are better for different scenarios. So if you're doing a repetitive task, for example, then music without lyrics uh, sorry, music with lyrics can really help you do better, whereas if you're doing something that requires more detail and more thought, then music without lyrics is better. But the main thing is choice. So in all areas where music improves productivity, um, it's far more effective if the listener has chosen it themselves rather than had it imposed on them. And fortunately for me, most of the firms in the rest of my talk didn't get that memo Otherwise, there'd be no talk. So music in the workplace appears in many ways. We have advertising jingles. We have those cheesy CDs that you hear in retail with those kind of uncanny valley cover versions that just aren't right. Um, elevator music. We have sales sing-alongs, which I think almost merit their own talk. And I want to talk about them, but I don't have time. Musical training videos. Again, if, in fact, if you come and see me at any point in the FizzPop tent, I can show you some really awful stuff that I couldn't fit into the talk. But I'm going to focus on the motivational corporate anthem. What makes this really special is the fact it's generally commissioned by or sometimes written by upper management. The idea is to inspire and motivate a workforce that they may never meet, but they can maybe see from the stage at the annual conference when they introduce the song. The song is designed for internal purposes, really, and as I say, to, to inspire and motivate and get people really fired up about working for a fantastic company. At least, I, you know, that's generally what they're going for. I, since I only have 20 minutes, I, this is going to be a bit of a whistle-stop tour through the best of the best and the worst of the worst of the genre. And I'm going to start, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go purely chronologically, but I will start with the first of the first, which is IBM. To my knowledge, this is, this is certainly the first documented um, corporate anthem. So IBM was founded by Thomas Watson, and he was very pro-music in the workplace. And in 1927, uh, he had published this songbook, Songs of the IBM, which contains 100 songs to be, song, to be sung by the workforce. They range from kind of hymns to the corporation itself, songs about how great Thomas Watson is, songs about other corporates, and um, 
you know, songs for each department as well. Of these hundred songs, um, the anthem is the rally song, Ever Onward. And as you can see, it appears in the songbook only just after America and the national anthem. Um, this is it's a real rousing, marching kind of a song to sort of rally the troops and, as I say, get people fired up about working for IBM. So, would you like to hear? if you want to. Everybody. Now, unfortunately, um, <laughs> oh, no, you're welcome. Please come join in. Um, Unfortunately, not everyone is as proud of their musical history as IBM. And, oh, have you finally got me on the big screen? Did you not? Oh, sorry. I didn't know. No, no wonder you weren't singing along. Um, not everyone's as proud of their musical history as IBM are. They kindly have the songbook on their website. They have MP3s on their website, recordings that I can grab and use in my talk. Um, I know that there are other companies between the 30s and the 70s who have corporate music, but I don't have any recordings of it. If you do, please come and see me at the Fizzpop tent. Bring me your corporate music. Um, things did happen in that period, in the 50s and 60s. Um, a big thing was the industrial musical, which is exactly as it sounds. Um, Broadway composers were actually commissioned to write entire musicals for car companies quite often, um, and they took them on the road. However, again, that needs its own talk. There is a documentary about the industrial musical that came out this year that you should absolutely go and look at. But I am going to stick with the corporate song and move forward to 1971 when Fujitsu uh, commissioned Martha Miyake, a famous jazz singer, to sing their song of Fujitsu. We'll run together going on wars now. Very much of the time. On to wars Days like that too, don't you? Tomorrow, as long as I make it to tomorrow, it's fine. You know, that's not too painful. I, I could listen to that. It, it's it's fairly innocuous. It's not too grating. Where it starts to get grating is in the 80s, as you can imagine. The decade of big hair and big shoulder pads and big marketing budgets and big power ballads and raps, if you're lucky. Um, someone who was very prolific in the 80s, musically, corporate musically speaking, was Apple. Apple were kind enough to create a large body of work, most of which are five or six minutes in length at least. So sadly, I can't play you all of them, but I will play you this magnificent thing coming up, which, um, which has its own video. And it, you know, it comes straight from VHS, but I'm not sure whether that perhaps enhances <laughs> the experience. You may recognize the influence. It's quite a literal video. They just give up all pretense that this is not a different song. I want to play you the whole thing, but it's literally about five minutes long, and I'm sorry, I'm going to skip onwards. Sorry. So. I know, if you come to the Fizzpop tent, yeah, I can play you any of these. Um, 
so like Apple with their enthusiastic not there to flash dance, what a feeling. Many companies have created their corporate song by simply nicking someone else's song and adding their own lyrics to it. I'm going to quickly play you uh, four, I think, and you see if you can recognize the original song. The title's a bit of a giveaway on this. So th these are all Ernst & Young employees, except I think the professional singer at the front, who probably never thought this would see the light of day. So this one's more recent, and people really should have learned by this time to stop doing this. This one's actually quite decent. Okay, and this, this next one I'm going to play you one line of, and that's all you need. We built this Starbucks! <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there is a line in it, knee deep in the mocha, but I, I, I figure I just need to tell you that. You can imagine the rest. So, that's all well and good and cringeworthy and painful, but you can get so much more creative with an original composition. Um, as many of the following companies did. Uh, I'm going to start with Acera, not because everyone remembers Acera, but because this is possibly the cringiest thing you've ever heard. This was created by an employee who apparently, he, he says on his own website, he's very proud of this, uh, he took this to the executives with the idea of creating a couple of corporate songs, played them through his boombox, and they were blown away. Acera... Um, was a product of the dot-com boom. So this is not an old thing. Not, not, not 80s old. I think it's also quite unexpected. A Sarah everywhere. So let me ask you. Are you ready to party? Are you? Uh -huh. Well, are you ready to get funky? Put your hands together. That's right. Get in the groove now. Let me hear you clap. Okay, here we go. Okay. Yo, homeboys, homegirls, gather round. We're popping it, kicking it, getting down. We're hot, we're bad, we're lean and mean. We're taking control of the Ebiz scene. We're in command, chain of demand. <sighs> taking control of the Ebiz scene. Can everyone hear this, by the way? That is that's fantastic. Yeah. So, as I say, uh, yeah. It, that, I don't know if it gets any cringier than that, although Apple will have a challenge for you later in the top. So, Sarah, we're not, by any way, the, the only company to embrace rap. Um, several of them did it. <laughs> I'm just going to launch right into it. So, PricewaterhouseCoopers. <laughs> to celebrate the merger of Pricewaterhouse and Coopers and Lyman, apparently there was some kind of internal challenge to create a corporate song to celebrate the event. And this was the rap version. Aren't the lyrics amazing? Welcome to the firm that is known for innovation, imagination, fascination, total global integration. Aren't you on the edge of your seat? Ericsson. I think this is recorded in the works canteen. Have you seen the light yet, baby? Seen the white glow in your neighbor's eyes? 
Do you want to get wireless with me tonight, baby? Give me your number, and I'll send you something you'll never forget. Otherwise, hey. come. Um, this is actually the chorus. There is a rap in there, I promise you, but this is the chorus that goes with that beginning. Um, uh, arguably, the, the king of all corporate raps is the semantic one, which was hailed by The Observer as the worst song in the history of music, with additional sinister corporate overtones. Um, my, my daughter's very excited about this. This is actually her favourite song of the whole lot, and I've had to listen to this far too much. Semantic is in the house. Couldn't not let you hear any of that. So we're going to get a bit more serious now. Um, I think part of the beauty of the corporate anthem is how seriously it generally takes itself. I think the best of them are the ones that just have no sense at all of how ridiculous they are. Um, so you've probably all heard you. If you were here early, then you will have heard the KPMG one, but I'm just going to play you a little snippet of it again because it's a classic, a classic. KPMG was strong as can be A team of power and energy We go for the goal Together we hold on to our vision of global strategy But possibly more serious than that, where G4S, you probably, do you remember the G4S though? <laughs> no? Around the time of the London Olympics, this came to light and G4S buried it really quickly, but not quickly enough. They couldn't get John Bon Jovi. They have nothing on Apple, trust me, nothing at all. So Apple, as I said, created a large body of work. And I think their, their most serious, their most sincere and earnest song was Apple Ripples. And it starts off, I think in a spa, I'm not sure. 10 years ago, something happened, something small, something most people didn't notice. But it did touch a few of us, then a few more, and a few more, one ripple following another, each new wave gaining more distance than the last. And still, the ripples keep coming. My husband complains about this because that's not how ripples work. to lull you into a false sense of what the song is and that continues for about 40 seconds and then this happens and if Meatloaf had been available this is when he would have started to sing When we started out Didn't have much to go on There was nothing in our pockets but a dream and in the silence of that first night We made the promise that we would make it right so It's really all about a journey. So the next thing, they go down to the river and they watch the river flow and then there's a long road and I think there's a hill and it's all a metaphor. It's five and a half minutes long. I think they were, you know, they were going for a sort of Jim, Jim Steinman feel. Three and a half minutes in is the first mention of Apple with the classic line, 
Oh, Apple. <laughs> um, so I am, I've, I've managed okay time-wise. This means I have time to leave you with my very, very favorite corporate anthem, which I think is genuinely nice. It's joyful. It's, you know, I, you think, I figure the guy that's singing it probably quite enjoys working for the company. It's got a rap. It's got a, it's got a cool hook that you can sing along with because it goes na 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 na. So you don't need to know the words. And it has a female backing singer somewhere in there. So thank you ever so much for coming. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Um, enjoy the rest of EMF. Have a great weekend. And please come and see me at the Fizz Pop tent and, um, you know, listen to more. It will be. I didn't put the lyrics up for this. We have time for a couple of questions. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? I didn't think so. Um, no, unfortunately, these, these don't all reside on a website. Um, there, there was a website, a guy called Chris Retig had a fantastic website that had tons of corporate music on it, um, which I think he, he stopped maintaining. Um, but there's a little story about that, because KPMG actually um, were not happy about him hosting the KPMG song, and they got in contact, and he got a takedown notice because he was breaking their link policy, and their link policy was that you have to ask permission to link to their website. <laughs> Um, I don't think that actually achieved anything on their part, but... Um, and the, the other guy, actually, whose who's work has really helped me is Peter Judge. He used to write for Z, ZNet? ZDNet? I'm actually... I've never had to say that out loud before. Um, who, who put a lot of corporate anthem stuff on there. Um, in fact, his, his stuff is mostly on there, but you can't, it's pretty hard to find on the ZNet site itself. You just Google it. Um, I will put my slides up somewhere but I haven't thought about where yet <laughs> um, but yeah that's oh sure yeah I'm gonna put them on my LinkedIn <laughs> have you Ooh, Christ, that's I think hot. it's really important that people know this about me. yeah oh well thank you thank you very much <laughs> sorry were, were there any more hi 
Hey, have you uh, ever heard the Avaya rap? Have I heard the, the what? Avaya, A V A. Avaya. Um, if not, it's worth a listen. Cool. I mean, it's not, but it is. <laughs> that sounds good. It's on YouTube, I think. Cool. It's yeah. <laughs> it's good. I do have yes. sadly a lot of songs that didn't make the cut just purely because of time. Um, so, but I'm not sure about that one, and I'm, I'm going to look that up. Thank you. Sorry, um, I have another question. Can't believe people are asking questions. Hello. Uh, hi. If, hi. If we're doing recommendations, have you seen the Microsoft Bruce Springsteen tribute band? Yeah. Ooh. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. Again, I. I. Yeah. Bruce, Bruce Springsteen and and sort of that that style. I think. I, I mean, I think that's possibly also a bit of a a bit of what Apple was going for with the meatloaf thing there. Meatloaf Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, he's very popular. But yes, I've, maybe in the next talk. I should ask for t more than 20 minutes next time maybe and play you, play you longer clips. <laughs> all right, so thank you very much for oh, cheers. sharing all your, all your songs with us. Thank you.